So here we are. Uh, first, we're going to analyze uh, typical operation transactions, right, for governmental activities and prepare the journal entries at both the government wide and the fund level, like the general fund level. So we're going to talk about both of those things. We're also going to prepare some adjusting uh, entries and pre closing entries for the trial balance. And uh, we're also going to prepare closing journal entries and the year-end general fund uh, financial statements. So we'll, we'll talk about those as we go. Um, we're also going to talk about inter-fund and intra-fund uh, activity transactions. Um, we're also going to account for transactions of a permanent fund, which is um, often called a trust fund. And then we're going to distinguish between... Uh, exchange a non-exchange transaction and define the classification use of a non-exchange transaction that's towards the end there okay so to begin with what we're going to be doing here is we're going to talk about um, the uh, we're going to use a town it's called the town of brighton and we're going to do some illustrative journal entries uh, for its 2017 year actually so uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have the end of the 2016 year and then the beginning of the 2017 uh, fiscal year. Okay, and so we're gonna have both the general fund, general ledger, and then we're also gonna have the governmental fund, which is the governmental, um, yeah, the governmental fund, the government wide financial statements for that. And uh, I'll illustrate. I, I put the governmental, the government wide, uh, the governmental funds in red, so we can kind of see distinguish between the both of them. So one of the main things that we're going to talk about here with the government wide um, transactions is it's going to be using the accrual basis of accounting, right? Uh, we're we're talking about really long term. And we also include all governmental activities, okay? So uh, where the general fund or the, um, the fund accounting is going to be modified accrual, and we're just going to have governmental funds only. We're going to have, a, and we're going to have a current a asset and liability, so it's going to be short term, really. Everything within the, the current fiscal year. A uh, government wide is going to be a uh, uh, more than that, okay. Um, and so, and so, anyways, we'll, we'll illustrate the differences as we go through the entries, because uh, they're going to look a, a lot different, right? But we're going to do them kind of at the same time, so that way, and it's really called co it's called a dual track approach, right? And so, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, be able to show that certain activities right here have no effect on the government-wide financial statements. Uh, because it's modified accrual, sometimes they're gonna they're going to record stuff for government uh, for the general fund uh, and it's not going to take place because of it's not going to take place in the government-wide side because government-wide is accrual basis, right? So on uh, like for example, expenses or expenditures, uh, they're gonna need to be like if we have stuff that's inventoried, right? Inventory stuff in accrual basis accounting isn't expensed when it's purchased; it's expensed when it's consumed. And we'll talk about the differences with that. Uh, some revenues also are not gonna be recorded at the same time as well. Okay, so. Um, so, so, but most uh, one of the things that we'll point out is most operating activities are going to affect both, but in different ways. So we'll we'll talk about some of those differences, and um, then we'll also talk about uh, depreciation. Right, we're, we're, those that is just that since that's accrual basis, depreciation is totally accrual uh, basis accounting. That's only going to affect the government wide, not uh, the general fund or any governmental fund for that matter. Okay. So really, what we're 
uh, most a lot of government entities are uh, do the typical fund accounting uh, software, right? Where they just do fund accounting. Uh, but because of this dual track, we're going to show uh, the fund that the fund accounting can be done in connection to uh, the government-wide stuff. Because most governments in uh, and the college is one of them, uh, TVCC, they do stuff on the fund accounting side, and then they have to uh, reclass and reconcile at the end of the year. So they have to move stuff around and try to make the try to make the government wide statements at the end of the year. Okay, uh, and sometimes this works good, and sometimes it's difficult to do all that at the end of the year. You have to convert all everything over to accrual, which uh, definitely takes a lot of uh, accounting time and effort. Okay. So this is uh, the first um, our journal entries. They're going to be illustrative, right? So uh, we see here that we're doing things only for the general fund, right? And in in the general ledger, okay. So we only do things for the general fund with budgets because. Uh, it's a legal requirement, right? So there is no legal requirement to budget for the government-wide financial activities. Uh, you only have to budget for uh, modified accrual, like current fiscal year uh, things, and that's why we that's that's why we have the general fund uh, budget entries here, is because that's all that's required. So we don't have to do the uh, government-wide, okay? So we, and we can see here our revenues, our budgeted revenues here are debits, our budgeted appropriations or credits. We've gone through this before in last chapter, and then uh, this is the bridge that uh, the budgetary fund balance uh, makes, okay, to balance these two. Okay, and then we, we also have all of the uh, revenue, right, in our subsids. So these are all the revenues in our subsidiaries. And then these are all the appropriations in the subsidiaries as well to hopefully balance the control accounts. They balance with the control accounts. Along with these, so, and we know through our uh, expenditure track, right, so that we went through in our first exam, that the appropriations really are the budgets, right? The encumbrances is where we commit uh, to buy certain things, right? And so really this is our commitment here, okay? So our commitment on these lines are going to be, again, through the general fund since we don't have budgeted uh, things with the government-wide. And so here we are committing, okay, to buy certain things. The encumbrances account is going to be uh, debited. And then outstanding, encumbrances outstanding, which is kind of the the um, matching account for encumbrances, is uh, credited. Okay, so the, and then these are the subsids, right? That match with that. And they're debits as well. And the specifics. Okay, because, and, and something important to note with the encumbrances is even though they're issued, maybe encumbrances are issued in 2017, they may not be f uh, filled, right, until 2018. So the actual uh, purchases, um, expenditures may not happen until 2018. So, um, so th because, because of that, so the the 2017 uh, the control dic dictates that 2017 be added to the encumbrances general account ledger account 
Okay, so that's why we have this right here standing out 2017. That way we can kind of say, okay, why is this? Is this rolling from one year to the next? Just in case some of these things uh, roll from one year to the next, because they can. If encumbrances were made in one year, they can roll to the next. Okay, so the budgeted funds can roll to the next. Um, in some cases, some governments, uh, the regulations don't don't uh, don't allow that. Uh, in Oregon, they don't actually, but um, in Idaho, you can do those kind of things. These are these are going to be filled encumbrances, right? Where we're actually going to have expenditures, uh, the invoices are going to come, and we're getting ready to pay them, right? So in this case, our encumbrances are uh, basically reversed, right? So what they used to be, they're reversed, and the uh, the ledgers are reversed as well. And in their place uh, comes the true expenditures, right? Okay, we can see the true expenditures now happening. So the, this is a payable that will be paid, okay? And these are the true expenditures that are happening on the subsids matched with uh, the uh, general fund control account, expenditures control account. Again, it's 2017, right, is something that's important to note. Um, so on the governmental side, here's where we have our government-wide okay, come in. Because these these now are taking uh, these now are um, expenditures uh, in these specific ones that can actually accrual basis accounting actually be recorded, okay? And then we got our vouchers payable there as well. Guys, so this is in addition to supplies, the general fund purchased a new copier. So this is a copier. That that's what this is. So this is uh, a copier, okay, so let's go ahead and put that up there. This is a copier, okay. So the general fund purchased a new copier during the year. It was ordered at cost of 15000 okay. So the, of course the encumbrance happens here, right. And then when it actually uh, comes in, then these are reversed. Okay, that's kind of the normal way that the encumbrances happen. Uh, the, so it's sometimes the encumbrances don't match up with the actual expenses, right? Uh, but the entire encumbrance is reversed. Okay, it doesn't matter what it actually costs. This is the commitment to buy. So if it's fifteen thousand dollars, we're committed to buy that. We're using up our budget appropriation for this. That way we don't overspend, right? But when it actually comes in, the actual is going to be uh, fourteen thousand five hundred fifty. That's what we're really going to pay. And that's the, what the real expenditure is on the general fund. Governmental, government-wide, uh, we're going to add the asset, right? This is our, this is our like long-term asset, maybe, huh? On there. Now, on the the general fund side, the fund accounting, there is no asset that we add because this again is short term, only current resources uh, and are used okay no ex no assets are kept on the general ledger general fund side of things only in the government wide okay here's here's some uh, payments of liabilities so this is uh, these are some um, of the, their balance of vouchers payable, okay? And a $90,000 amount due to, to the governmental, the federal government at the end of 2016. 
Okay, so that's what's being paid here. Our payable is being reduced. Right, our payable is being reduced here. And we owe the government, due to from the government, okay, is being paid and then cash is being reduced. This happens in both. Okay, so in this case, this is the dual, right? Uh, other ones, they were they were uh, separated out because they had different kinds of entries that went into both. When they're the same entry, then it'll be lined up like this. Okay, and so uh, so these are liabilities. Okay, now we've got our payroll and payroll taxes. So here's our expenditure in the general fund. Okay, so we have a straight up expenditure. No appropriations have happened for this necessarily. I mean, uh, not appropriations, but encumbrances. So a lot of times, a lot of times for the payroll, encumbrances aren't going to happen necessarily for payroll. There's just straight up expenditures, and we have some uh, payables that are made. Okay, all all associated with different kinds of payroll contracts that we had. This is specifically for um, different different government units that we that we run the payroll through our entity and in the city right this is Brighton City and then we have our uh, expenditures right there we haven't paid cash yet because we have all these payables still set up right so that's really the next step is we're going to get in paying cash okay so with the payroll on the governmental side this is accrual based right Okay, so as we incur them, we're going to go ahead and pay them. So, so the expenses are, are recorded directly, and then we have all of our payables. So we really do owe them. So that's, that's uh, we haven't paid them cash yet, but we, we will. Okay, so here's the cash payments that are happening. Okay, so here's cash out. Uh, for And this happens the same for both. Okay, um, and then for our... Uh, general fund, this is specifically general fund, this is the due to that's paid here to the government and all of the uh, federal government contracts are expensed this in this direction. Okay, and the governmental, the federal government uh, is also set up like this for gov for the governmental. So we see in the on the government wide, right? This is the government wide. Uh, we're putting this straight towards a general ledger, a uh, debits, right? On the uh, general ledger side, our uh, general ledger is going to take the main expenditures, control account, and then have a bunch of subsidies set up. Government-wide, no no subsidies. So when our property taxes, right, as a government, we can tax, right? So when we uh, have a levy, then that means there's uh, receivables that are created, right? At specific, uh, and we do a levy when we do the budget. Is usually when they're when they're created. And they're at specific rates and specific amounts, right? Okay, so property tax is an example of a non-exchange revenue, right? So we don't we don't have to give anything to get it. Okay, so we're going to receive value without giving a uh, service exactly uh, one to one, right? That's really what the tax is. Okay. And so, and, and more specifically, it's called an imposed non-exchange revenue. That's kind of the technical term for it, right? Because it's imposed, we put it in with our levy. It's, uh, it's by law, right, is the imposed part. Uh, non-exchange means, you know, there's no specific, for those that, for, this, for the individual taxpayer, they might, might not get uh, the services equal to their taxation uh, burden, right? They may, they may even get more. It just depends. It's not evenly distributed. 
Um, so the receivable on this side, the receivable is debited. Okay. Uh, when there is an enforced uh, claim, as the case of a property tax levy, the revenue is credited in the year for which the uh, taxes is levied, right? So typically, um, yeah, and available under the modified, right? So that's the trick with the modified. Uh, it, it's when it's uh, available, right? Levied and available is when the modified accrual um, revenue is credited. And we'll see that here. Okay, so in the um, general fund, okay, We're going to have our uh, taxes receivable. And then we're going to have our revenues. Uh, this here is the allowance. So we may not collect on that. That's, that's our estimate, right? That's our estimate that we put in there. And then in our uh, revenues ledger, subsid, uh, it'll be attached here, right? Revenues, revenues. That's the control account is right here. Okay, so now, now for our governmental activity, okay? So we've got our uh, receivable. We haven't actually got the cash yet, right? So that's why we're setting up receivables, right? So eventually when we get the cash and then we'll reduce our receivables, uh, we'll have already re recorded uh, the revenues though, right? So the revenues have already been recorded. So, so now we're getting the cash. And, and in both cases, general fund and governmental activities, government-wide statement, as we get the cash, we're able to reduce the revenue. Um, and, and as uh, we have the, uh, as we find out things that are not being collected or they're late, then we're able to record uh, a, a delinquent taxes receivable and reduce the actual current Right, so th this is kind of the classification of uh, it's currently receivable as opposed to it's late, right? And that's all done through the governmental activity on the governmental activity side uh, or government wide side using accrual basis accounting. Okay, so now now we have a situation where um, there are there's interest and penalties that are being charged for delinquent uh, taxes. So on the general fund side, um, that's going to be uh, recorded. As revenue, so extra revenue that we uh, can expect and it matches up in our subsid receivable since we haven't received the cash yet right but some of those this uncollectible interest and penalty we're not going to receive so that's why we do a allowance accounts as well for there okay so the interest is also uh, receivable here on the government-wide statement uh, and then we have our general revenues that we're uh, crediting uh, along with our allowance as well there so it looks different right no subsid side of, of this of the government-wide statement government activities so 
But we hear it, so finally we're we're able to collect, and usually it happens in small uh, batches. We're able to collect delinquent taxes after the fact, uh, and so um, as we collect the uh, interest and penalties, right? So we're able to have our uh, receivable and our revenues recorded as well. Okay. And this is just additional, like additional, like uh, people that were were charged interest and penalty at the time um, that we realize it, we go ahead and record it. Okay, now we're actually collecting. So here's the delinquent taxes we're collecting on. We know it because of uh, it's going to be in a separate account with a separate title. So the cash comes in. Uh, we're able to collect, right? Uh, reduce our receivable. That's the reduction of the receivable. Um, uh, the receivable for delinquents, and this is the uh, the interest and penalties that come in with them. So two receivables here, right? Two receivables uh, for different um, purposes. One is the actual tax. One is the interest and penalties, and then the cash that totals both of them. All right. Finally, the, finally, there comes a time when it's like, well, there's we're not going to collect on them, right? Either they went into foreclosure or whatever the case is, they declared bankruptcy. We know we're not going to be able to collect on them. Okay. Okay, so at that time, we come back and we say, okay, this allowance that we had set up, we're going to go ahead and uh, reduce the allowance. Okay, but we're still going to try to collect on it. We're still going to try to collect on it. Okay, and we also have an allowance for uncollectible. Uh, interest penal penalties um, and we're still going to try to collect on it so we're setting up receivables here so that's how we adjust for it all right so now now other revenue comes in Okay, so these other revenues come in, in in these different forms, right? So we've got, for example, we have uh, sales tax revenue, right? Right here, uh, licenses and permits, fines and forf forfeitures, uh, charges, service. So all these different revenues come in, okay? So we have cash and then revenues that we're taken care of on the general fund side, general ledger, and then the subsid ledgers as well. Okay. And then we have our uh, governmental, government wide side when we receive cash. And then we're crediting all the different revenue accounts in our general ledger there. So sometimes when governments, right, so they levy the taxes, it takes a while to collect all the taxes, right? But the government still may, may need to operate. They still need to provide services and do different things. And so sometimes what they'll do is they'll go to a bank and they'll say, hey, you know what? It's a pretty uh, sure thing that we're going to end up receiving these taxes that we've levied. So would you mind lending us some money? In the meantime, we'll pay you some interest. Uh, in anticipation of us getting those taxes, right? We're going to pay you with the taxes that we get, uh, but right now we just need the cash, right? So this this is really a cash budgeting technique that's done by governments. It's called a tax anticipation note. So as the tax anticipation note happens for both governmental and uh, general fund and governmental activities, then we're going to get cash. That's what we need, 
right, to operate. Uh, but we're going to set up a payable. Okay. So tax anticipation notes payable. Typically, uh, they're going to be current because they're going to be paid with current, and that's why it's in the general fund here as well as the governmental activities, is they're going to be paid with current tax levied. Right? Okay, so as our uh, as our taxes come in here, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna be we we are gonna pay off with cash. We're gonna pay off that note that we borrowed, plus interest or whatever fees we have. It's gonna be miscellaneous expenditures, what we have, but it's like <laughs> banking fees or interest and stuff like that. So it's gonna be the same thing in the governmental activity, but. We're not going to have any subsidies set up. We're going to just use straight out expenses for general government. Okay, so now now we're going to talk about special topics. So we're going to shift gears here a little bit. Uh, so th those were the illustrative uh, journal entries, kind of how we do it. Entries that end up in the general fund and entries that end up in the government wide fund. So dual track, and so that's what we're going to do in the Smithville as we go through our Smithville um, activities in class as well as we're going to be uh, doing both at the same time as well for chapter four. We're going to have a uh, fair amount of entries, more than we have in the past to put in for chapter four. Okay, so here's here's um, one of the special topics. So what happens if we have some major errors, right? Okay, so, so if the errors happen, uh, to current receivables and revenue or current expenditures, it should be corrected with adjustments to the affected accounts. Crediting or debiting is required to correct the error, right? So we need to correct them as soon as possible. Uh, if there are prior period adjustments or prior period expenditures, okay, prior period here, uh, the the Adjustment should be made to fund balance, right? That's kind of our net position. When uh, when we do this for for-profit entities, we do it to uh, retained earnings, beginning retained earnings, but really that's our fund balance is, is what that is, right? Fund balance for governmental accounts. Uh, so this is, this is the case right here. What if we... Uh, encumber and order some goods or services in a prior year and we finally get them in um, in the current year right for one we're going to have them listed out by date right on the encumbrances and, and expenditures so it'll be hopefully easy to be able to separate those out um, okay so so this is so when the goods or services are provided they are considered an expenditure to the extent of the amount that was encumbered and did not lapse, okay? Any ac excess to the encumbrances is considered an expenditure in the year in which the goods or services are received, okay? So so typically goods or services, uh, when the goods or services are provided, that's when they're an expenditure, okay? Any excess, so let's say they were provided in, a, in a, uh, 2016, then that's when the expenditure happens. If the encumbrance wasn't enough to pay for all of that, and, and it happened in 2016, then it would be a 2017 uh, expenditure, right? If the encumbrance wasn't enough. If all if the services are provided and everything happens in 2017, then it's an expenditure in 2017. So we don't expend backwards necessarily, unless this goods or services happened back in the day, back in the previous fiscal year. All right, so here's we're talking about revision of general fund budget. So what happens if we uh, are in the middle of the year, uh, we blow our budget, or uh, more more likely, what happens in the middle of the year for government, hopefully, is maybe we get some extra revenue that we need to spend. In any case. We need to, uh, typically the governing body will pass what's called a supplementary budget. So they will uh, change the budget. Uh, and then we need to record those entries, just like uh, those little extra marginal entries, the extra revenue we receive or any extra expenditures not previously budgeted for. 
typically isn't the case, but I suppose it could happen. And then uh, we're, we're going to put those in the appropriate journal entries, right, in the general fund, not government-wide. General fund is, is what we need to budget for. Okay. Uh, another, uh, and then another topic is the do-tos. They, they, we've had a couple of those, right? They're kind of like, uh, they're kind of like payables, right? Do twos, and, and there's also what we call do, whoops, do froms. And these are these are inter uh, inter fund transfers. Okay, we'll talk more about those, right? But internal exchange transactions are uh, that are reciprocal don't need uh, typically we don't need these, but when we right when we when we uh, send fund balance basically um, from one fund to another expenditure revenue wise, then a do to do from needs to be set up because our fund has to balance. So if you get rid of like for example in one fund you send some uh, revenues over, right? Or uh, and you get nothing in return, right? And like nothing's coming back, right? Then this do from needs to be set up, okay? As well, the fund that's receiving that uh, is going to receive an asset, but um, or receive um, uh, revenues or expenditures, and they're not going to have anything in to give in return. They're not going to give anything in to return. So then they have a do to set up and that's just to get the funds to balance okay at the end of the fiscal year these do to do froms need to be taken care of right they need to be paid out from the funds typically uh, to have rollover do to do froms for uh, carry from fiscal year to fiscal year is is not going to work okay so here is uh, kind of the differences in accounting. One is called the purchases method. The other is called the consumption method. Okay. So as we purchase things using the modified accrual. Okay. Modified accrual. Since we're looking short term, when we purchase things, we expense them. This is modified accrual basis, right? We use what what's called periodic inventory systems in this case. But we don't when we when we put something in inventory, it's already expensed. Basically, is the way it happens. Expenditures and inventory supplies must be adjusted at the end of the year. So at the end of the year, as we purchase them, we really um, we really expense them. Okay. A consumption is more of the uh, accrual basis, which says that we have to match our consumption of uh, expended items or inventory up with the revenues generated as they're consumed. Okay. So in this case, we have perpetual, right? So as revenues happen or as activities are carried out, then they're expensed, not until. Not until they're consumed or used up. So, so different. This is more of a long-term approach, right? You actually have inventories in this case. In the purchases method, really the inventories are, um, for the most part, not important to track your expenses. Your expenses happen as you buy uh, goods. Okay. So um, here's a, here's another uh, special topic. So we're gonna we're gonna um, set up our trial balances or um, as a pre-closing and closing entries, right? So pre-closing trial balances prepared at, at fiscal year end, uh, listing all balance sheet and operating statement, and budgetary accounts. That's pretty typical for a, a trial balance. All temporary accounts, both budgetary and operating, must be closed to the appropriate fund balance account, right? So really, at the end, when we're doing closing accounts. We need to close all of these temporary accounts to 
fund balance. Just like we do in the for-profit side, we close everything to our capital accounts. Um, in in the uh, not-for-profit or the governmental side, it's really fund balance that gets all the balances moved over from temporary. Okay, so closing the operating accounts increases or decreases the balance of the general ledger fund balance, unassigned. Right? There's different kinds of uh, fund balance, uh, but specifically operating accounts are going to end up in the unassigned fund balance uh, either increasing or decreasing other other types of uh, accounts may may uh, affect the, the different balances fund balances that are already assigned or committed Okay, and th and this is really where that is about, right? So there there's either unassigned, restricted, or committed, or assigned, right? And so really, that's really uh, a sorting activity at the end of the year to say, okay, what type of activities are happening, and really where is the fund balance going to be uh, going to need to go? Okay, so the, the governmental fund uh, financial statements are always considered to be a major fund, right? So they're always in a separate column. The, the, uh, so that's kind of what they are. Typically, a, a general fund uh, financial statements are set up, like the balance sheet and the statement of revenues and uh, expenditures and changes. That's kind of the income statement, um, as well as a budgetary comparison statement so a budget to actual right oops a actual is set up as well okay some special revenue funds uh, are needed when and we've talked about this before but really it's when a revenue source is restricted or committed to, for a specific operating purpose right like any revenue we get from street fund it, we know where it's going it's going to the street fund specifically right and there's revenues set up to go in and support the street fund maybe like gas tax or something like that right there's also library fees and things that go to support the library there's specific trust funds uh, which is a fiduciary fund that's uh, set up um, specifically for that and that we only spend like out of a trust fund typically you would spend only the the earnings or the interest okay so certain operating grants that's kind of like with the street fund there's certain grants that are set up just for street uh, improvements and things that come from other governmental units okay uh, special revenue uh, fund finance financial uh, accounting is all set up by uh, we have major special revenue funds that are set up and so there's there uh, a lot of times they're set up in their own fund uh, apart from the general fund okay so this is um, some of our due to do from right so we have inter fund loans um, so no 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 uh, journal entries are required at the government wide level but they are at the at the uh, general fund level, right? For in the fund level, um, interfund uh, transfers are a uh, non-reciprocal, right? So this is where our due to do from sets up. Oops, due from so the, the non-reciprocal transaction and then uh, our intra activities right are between two governmental funds or two enterprise fund inter happens between governmental and an enterprise right so enterprises are the more of the of the business type uh, activities happening in a government uh, where you charge fees and uh, and provide services for fees and stuff like that. Governmental stuff is usually for general operating activities. 
Okay, a, a trust fund is a type of fiduciary fund. Really, what it, the way it's set up is you can either have a public purpose uh, trust, which is set up specifically for to support programs or functions for the citizenry, or you can have a private purpose trust, which is more mostly set up for uh, uh, the specific organization, all you know, the government uh, organization as a whole. Um, typically, you only spend the earnings on that. Okay. Uh, so, and because of that, they're called permanent funds, right? So they're endowments. They're gonna have. You're not. You're gonna have money in them all the time because you're only spending the earnings on it. So th that's talked about a little bit more later. And so these permanent funds can be set up. And th these are some of the transactions that happen with permanent funds, right? So we have assets that are held and revenues that come out of that um, as they're sold. And then uh, the earnings, right, are going to be recorded as well. Um and as they're used, right, so we have uses of the fund, okay, not necessarily, uh, and th those transfer out to support uh, different activities and programs within the uh, entity, okay. So, so yep, so we, we also have receivables and interest revenues that were, these are for the earnings off of the, the bonds, right, or and then as we may perhaps we um, we have our you know we're going to change our value of our bonds as they gain uh, value as well okay so here's here's a bunch of um, revenue contribution of endowment okay and our uh, fund setting up for our fund balance